Hello, it's Dr. Daystorms again. And this uh, lecture right here, this video, is going to go over what happens in ways that you can violate the octet rule. And we're not talking about, about hydrogen, helium, or lithium, which has the duet rule. We're talking about um, atoms such as phosphorus and sulfur. So there are three possible exceptions to viola violations of the octet rule. One is you could have ions or molecules that have an odd number of electrons. The second is you could have an ion or a molecule that has less than an octet. And then finally, you can have an ion or molecule that has more than eight valence ele electrons. It, it's an expanded octet or, or you know, it, has, it just has more than eight. So this first instance... Whenever you have an odd number of electrons, it's relatively rare, and they are very unstable or reactive. And these ions or molecules are things that you have actually heard a lot about in the, in the press, because many times they're so reactive that we call them radicals, or, or we like to call them free radicals. And so you probably have heard about that, and how you know, free radicals damage your skin and... and, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go into any greater detail here with respect to the free radicals, but just know that a free radical means it's got an odd number of electrons, and that one single electron wants to go out and react and to get another, react, uh, another electron in order to form a bond. The next example is if you can have fewer than eight electrons. So here we have, you know, a boron trifluoride, BF3, and if you draw, draw it so that all four atoms has a filled octet, and you calculate the uh, charge, uh, the formal charge on each of the atoms, you would find out that these would be the resonance structures, and you, in all of them, the boron would be negatively one charged, because bronze has three, and in each of these uh, resonance structures, it, it owns four, and so it's going to have a negative one charge. And in each instance, you're going to have a fluorine that's got a positive one charge. But that's not accurate picture of the way that the electrons are distributed in BF3. Instead, what you can do is give boron, remember boron, came in with three valence electrons, instead of having it have a filled octet, do it to where you can draw the Lewis structure to where boron only has six valence electrons. Because in doing so, the boron and all three fluorines are all neutral. And that's really what's important. All four atoms now are neutral. Okay? So, it's all right to violate the octet rule and have fewer than eight electrons provided that the Lewis structure that you draw allows for a, a structure that is completely neutral in that all of the atoms here have uh don't have a formal charge the formal charge is all zero okay and so you especially see this the one that you see this the most with is boron uh or, or you can see possibly with aluminum then we have an example of when you can have more than eight electrons and so this is a common uh this is a compound that does occur and that's that's phosphorus tetrachloride I'm sorry, phosphorus pentachloride, not tetrachloride, phosphorus pentachloride. And the only way that it can exist is if the phosphorus has 10 valence electrons around it. It's neutral, phosphorus is in group 5, it makes 5 bonds, and so therefore there's no formal charge. Each chlorine is also neutral. So how can this happen? How is that possible? Well, it's possible, remember, phosphorus is on the third row. So this only occurs whenever you are on the third row. Ooh, that looks really funky. Third row or below, I should say. 
So anytime it's shown on the third row of the periodic table or below, remember, it's possible to have these d suborbitals. And so they can get involved and allow for the valence shell to have more than eight electrons. Let's go back. Um, another example is phosphate. Okay, and phosphate is, a, is was a, one of the polyions, polyatomic ions that you needed to memorize from chapter two. Remember, it was PO four, three minus. Well, there are multiple resonance structures possible, multiple loose structures possible, and you could draw it to where. Everything has an octet, but the central atom has a charge of positive one. All of the outer atoms also uh, have charges of negative one, and that comes up with minus three. However, if you just take two, and it doesn't matter which one, two of these electrons, and you make it, or you allow it to form a double bond with the phosphorus, to where now there are 10 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 electrons around that central phosphorus atom, then you actually eliminate two of these charges, and so now only three of the oxygens have minus one charge of phosphorus, and the fourth oxygen, both are completely neutral. Okay? So, when can you expect, or when is it okay to have to violate the octet rule. It is okay to violate the octet rule if the central atom, that's the important thing, the central atom is on the third row of the periodic table or below. And that way it can expand the octet and it eliminates some of the formal charges. Now, if by expanding the octet it doesn't eliminate the formal charges or it adds additional formal charges to it, then you don't want to do that. It's only if by putting 10 electrons or more on that central atom, then you um, eliminate some of these some of these formal charges. Okay, so the the electron of uh, the atoms that you see this the most with really have to do or have to be phosphorus and sulfur for us. Especially, we're going to see this a lot when you get into organic chemistry with sulfates and sulfonates and also in organic and biochemistry with phosphates, because this happens a lot in vivo. If you have any questions, please feel free to set up and meet me for office hours, come to the help session, or go to ACE for additional um, tutoring. I'll see you in class.